And we're going to open with hockey with our good friend Zig Fricasi. He probably didn't expect this, but he can handle it. He's a radio vet and a Bruins fan. And Ziggy, start spreading the news. Your Bruins are number one overall in the National League. How's it feel, brother? I don't know if I'm cursed or hexed. I mean, you know, because we saw what happened last year, Rod, but I got to tell you something. Uh, for all their travails, the trials and tribulations, the fact that they are number one again uh, says a lot about the perseverance, about uh, the additions Don Sweeney's made, about the goaltending, and largely the uh, decent enough defense, but still there's gaps. There's still things to be concerned about, but it's pretty amazing what they've gone through to be number one again at this point says a lot about that organization. Legitimate Stanley Cup contenders for sure. For whatever reason, they're not getting their due, and I think they're happy with that because they got their butts kissed uh, summarily last year, and we all saw what happened. You know, Zig, I'm going to start here. You probably talk about the Cowboys more than any other team in the National Football League. It's your favorite team and mine. I see my football buddies in Texas are turning in their Cowboys cards and saying, we're done. Not cheering for them anymore. We're, we're auditioning new teams to cheer for Cowboys fans. Can you explain what they did or didn't do in free agency? Well, the clear thing is, Rod, you go back to what Jerry Jones said about being all in. Okay. And I think the hot take media and maybe the long term fans thought they're going to spend like it's 1999 all over again. The fact of the matter is, they haven't spent on a big name free agent since Brandon Carr back in late 2000s, early 2010s. I mean, there was a stretch, Rod. It was at five years, $50 million. Like, there was a stretch. He had two or one interception over a three year span. A hell of a player, but he ain't Dion or Night Train Lane. He wasn't making the impact play. So I think since then, they've decided to take a more measured approach. So I think people misinterpreted Jera, as I like to say, Jera, in, uh, in terms of that. So they misinterpreted that they're going to be all in. What he actually said was in terms of all in, Dak, who seems to be in the news a lot lately and doesn't seem pretty good at this point, CeeDee Lamb, Micah Parsons, those are your franchise guys that he is, quote, all in on. So the Cowboys are going to be a team that's going to try to draft well, and then once they do have their stars, and they've been noted for this, to lock them in to long-term deals. Now, I can understand other team, other people want to you know, get on the Texans bandwagon all of a sudden because this is a team that seems to be being aggressive, exciting rookie quarterback last year, won their division, won a playoff game. It seems like they're more urgent to do things. And there's other teams that look busy which is why I think Cowboys fans, and again, Rod, you and I both know this has been nearly 30 years now since they've seen the Lombardi Trophy. There seems to be sort of a era of entitled and complacent behavior with Jerry and Steven. And, and not just to wrap this thought up, too, here's another thing to consider. They say they want to keep the Cowboys competitive and this and that. Let's also not forget they have the legends hospitality which is in the L.A. stadium, which is in the Vegas stadium, which I think is going to be in the Buffalo stadium. Where I'm going with this is, makes you wonder, you know, yeah, the football owning a team, the $9 billion Cowboys is nice, but are priorities in that? Or are we wanting to maximize potential with other teams' revenues coming in from those stadium deals that they have? So just something I think to keep an eye on. Just like the Fenway group, with, that owns the Red Sox and the, and the Pittsburgh Penguins? Where are the full resources going for those teams? Yeah. Is it more important to make money or win championships? I think we know the answer to them, right. the way it looks. Justin Fields traded from Chicago. If you were the Bears and you had the number one overall pick, is it a slam dunk that you're taking Caleb Williams, the Bears, or will he take one of the other three that are rated in the first round, do you think? Very good question. Uh, and I know Ryan Leaf, my uh, colleague at Sirius XM NFL Radio, second overall pick of the 98 draft, um, you know, and has gone through a lot. And he's a champion if you, if you uh, 
follow him and what he's gone through and how he's overcome. But anyway, the point being on that rod is he thought that the he could if if it was him to do it all over again, do you hold Caleb Williams? Does he hold the Bears? I hate to use the term hostage, but like, all right. Well, this needs to happen or that needs to happen for me to want to go there. So I think now, obviously, you don't have a quarterback there of note with the Chicago Bears. So I think they're, you know, almost between a rock and a hard place. I, I got to think they're going to take him number one overall. Uh, although that was interesting. I, I still would have done it where I would have kept him, uh, Fields, and Caleb Williams to create that competition. But again, that's just me and. You know, they didn't get a whole lot for him. What was it, a sixth-round pick that could be a fourth based on playing yeah. time? And I heard you and Darren talk earlier. I, I agree. I think the, the Steelers did a, a cost-effective thing, Rod. Think about this. Your top two quarterbacks for 2024 combined under $5 million. That's not a bad way to go. <laughs> not at all. Who do you expect is in the – who do you think's in the best position? We've got about three minutes left here at the most. Uh, Kirk Cousins in Atlanta, Russell Wilson in Pittsburgh, now Justin Fields in Pittsburgh, or any one of these quarterbacks that have switched teams. Who went to the best spot? Great question. Um, well, that's a really good question. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to be curious to see what happens like with Mason Rudolph in Tennessee because I thought uh, his last couple of games with Pittsburgh last year, he, was, he wasn't superstar. But he wasn't bad either. I thought he did a nice job managing things. I don't know if he gets on the field there, but you got to think with Cousins in Atlanta. First of all, his wife's from Georgia. So as long as the missus is happy and the family's happy, that's very important. Uh, you've already got a star receiver there, I believe, in Drake London. Uh, Kyle Pitts has been badly underutilized the last couple of years. If they find his form, look out. You've already got a dominant runner in. B. John Robinson, and the offensive line on paper, Rod, looks to be good. But here's something Alex Marvez and I were discussing on the show yesterday. You got the new offensive coordinator, Robinson, coming in with his scheme. Does that personnel fit the scheme? And uh, that kind of thing. So that's going to be something worth watching. But I think Cousins in, in a bad division, very winnable division, and if he's totally healthy, that looks like a good mix for him and the Atlanta Falcons. And interesting, too, Arthur Smith's gone to Pittsburgh, right? So he's going to be dealing with Russell Wilson up there. You talk about underutilized talents and a guy that's been criticized. Uh, oh, man, I can't believe it's so far away from the season. But it's fun to talk about now. Zig, you always brighten my day. You know that. I appreciate it, man, and I can't wait till we do it again. Hey, I'm waiting for that invite to the CFL uh, Grey Cup this year, Peterson. Dime on you over here, so... <laughs> I'll be in Vancouver. If you want to stay in the RV, we got a spot for you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Zig. All right, buddy. Take care. Uh, Zig Fricasi from Sirius XM NFL Radio. We don't actually have an RV lined up, but I feel like if we did, Zig would be welcome.